Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the economy in Saudi Arabia. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, hang on a minute, Joe, don't be telling me that Saudi Arabia have got problems because I've seen that country, they've got a ton of oil and they are super wealthy. And you'd be right in terms of the oil supplies because Saudi Arabia has the second largest reserves out of every country in the world. Only Venezuela has larger reserves and obviously Venezuela is heavily impacted by sanctions, so it's not doing particularly well. Now, Saudi Arabia is also a major producer of oil. It's not just sitting on those reserves, it's doing things with them. It's the third largest producer after the USA and Russia. And actually, it's the world's largest exporter because the USA and Russia use quite a large percentage of the oil that they produce each day. Saudi Arabia is exporting the majority of theirs, over 7.5 million barrels per day. So obviously, if you're selling that volume of oil at around $90 per barrel, you're going to be making a ton of cash. And Saudi Arabia is raking in lots of money. But unfortunately, from Saudi Arabia's point of view, they're a little bit like those neighbors that you have that have a really nice house, drive really nice cars, send their kids to really nice schools, and all of a sudden one day you hear that they've gone bankrupt. And you think, how can that possibly be the situation? But the reason for it is that they're overspending. And Saudi Arabia's problem right now is that they are super ambitious. And Saudi Arabia's ambitions revolve around a project called Vision 2030, which is basically the creation of a whole new economic zone that's going to attract in people from all over the world. And as part of this futuristic vision, they've had an idea to build a city called The Line, which is a 100 mile long city that's going to be in a straight line. It will be a triple decker city and it will be walled by mirrored walls, which all sounds entirely crazy and obviously extremely expensive to build in the middle of the desert. So in today's video, as this is the first time that we've talked about Saudi Arabia, we'll have a look at the country, talk about the population and how it got to where it is today. We'll have a look at the fantastic Vision 2030 plan that Saudi Arabia have put together. And this is like something out of a sci-fi movie. This is the sort of futuristic city that we all want to be living in in around 10 years time. We'll then talk about what's happening with oil and oil production in Saudi Arabia because the majority of it is focused on the country's Aramco business, which previously was 100% state-owned and has now been listed. It's one of the biggest companies in the world that you can buy shares in. We'll talk about what's been happening with GDP because over the last three quarters, Saudi Arabia has seen falling GDP, and that's one of the problems that they're now encountering. We'll also have a look at some of the other of Saudi Arabia's key indicators. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is likely to happen with Saudi Arabia over the course of the next three to five years, and what this means for the global economy. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say once again, thank you so much to everyone that's supporting the channel. If you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks recently, thank you for the time and effort that you've taken to do that. Really, really appreciate it. And if you're a long-term supporter, either through Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee membership or YouTube membership, thank you for that long-term support. It really helps to keep me going. It tells me that I'm on the right track, that I'm doing something right, that people are liking. And that support keeps me motivated and keeps me thinking up new ideas for videos. So thank you so much. Saudi Arabia is a country located in the Middle East and occupies around 80% of the Arabian Peninsula. It's bordered by Jordan, Iraq and Kuwait to the north, by the Persian Gulf, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates and Oman to the east, by Yemen to the south and the Red Sea to the west. The climate of Saudi Arabia is hot and dry and a lot of the country is covered by desert and sand, and only around 7% of the total land area is viable for cultivation. Oil was first discovered in Saudi Arabia in the 1920s, and the industry grew rapidly in the 50s, 60s and 70s, and now dominates the economy entirely. The current population of Saudi Arabia is around 37 million people. And as you can see from the shape of the population pyramid, there are significantly more males than females in the country, as a result of the fact that migrant labour that's attracted in tends to be exclusively male. And I thought at this point it'd be interesting to have a look at the top 10 countries where the number of men outstrips the number of women. At number 10 on the list is Djibouti, which has a 53% male population. 
closely followed by Bhutan, which also has 53%. Equatorial Guinea comes in at number 8 with 56%. Saudi Arabia is number 7 on the list with 58% male. Kuwait is number 6 with 61%. The Maldives is number 5 with 63%. Bahrain number 4 with 64%. Oman is number three with 66%. The United Arab Emirates comes in at number two with 69%. And the country with the highest percentage male population in the world is Qatar, where it's 75%. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, Saudi Arabia has ambitious plans to develop a large area of its land called Neom into one of the biggest cities and industrial centers in the whole of the world. So you're probably asking at this point, what is Neom? Well, Neom is a huge region of Saudi Arabia that's been earmarked for massive amounts of investment and development. And this project is like nothing else on earth. The rulers of Saudi Arabia have plans to make this the biggest development that has ever been envisaged. They want to attract in hundreds of billions of dollars worth of investment to develop Neon into being the place that everybody globally would like to live. This is an aspirational center that's going to have cities that are created from nothing and developed up to 13% of the world trade. They'll also have lots of different forms of entertainment and pastimes and hobbies and even some skiing, which sounds absolutely crazy because it's in the middle of a desert. But by far the most ambitious out of all of the projects within this project is the city called The Line, which is a 100 mile long city that will be in a straight line, built over three stories and encased by mirrored walls. All of the developments in Neon will be powered by renewable energy and its location is estimated to be within six hours of 40% of the world population. Now the futuristic idea behind the city called The Line is that cities in the past have been built in dysfunctional ways that don't really work. And The Line is designed to transform all of this by putting 9 million residents into a 100 mile long line, which will have a footprint of around 24 square miles. The idea is that communities will be organized into three dimensions, with residents having access to all their daily needs within a five minute walk of their neighborhood. And the plan is that the infrastructure will make it possible to travel end to end in 20 minutes, with no needs for cars, resulting in zero carbon emissions. Now, obviously, all of this looks extremely futuristic, and the city itself is designed to be 500 meters tall and housed within an elegant mirror glass facade. Now, you may be asking about the climate at this point, because this thing is sitting in the middle of the desert. However, it will have a temperate microclimate with natural ventilation and the energy and water supplies are designed to be 100% renewable. So all of that looks extremely exciting, but also extremely expensive. And the Saudi Arabian authorities have been looking to bring in foreign direct investment to fund a big portion of this. And this is one of the problems that Saudi Arabia is now facing. This map of the world shows the countries with the world's largest oil supplies and the size of the country is proportionate to their oil reserves. So obviously Venezuela isn't the largest country in the world, but it does have the largest oil supplies. And as you can see from this, Saudi Arabia is the country with the second largest oil reserves, over 266 billion barrels, which is almost 100 billion barrels more than Canada, which comes in at number three. Iran comes in at number four, followed by Iraq, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, Russia, Libya, and the USA is ranked as the country with the 10th largest reserves, with total reserves of around 37 billion barrels. Now, it's one thing to have large reserves, but it's what you do with them that counts. And this chart shows the countries with the largest oil production. And as you can see, the USA is right at the top of this list, producing around 12.9 million barrels per day, followed by Russia, who are producing around 10 million, Saudi Arabia comes in at number three, producing just under 10 million barrels per day, so a close third behind Russia. Canada is number four with 4.6 million barrels per day, followed by Iraq, China, Iran, Brazil, the United Arab Emirates, and number 10 on the list is Kuwait, that produces around 2.7 million barrels per day. 
Now, as I mentioned at the start of today's video, the USA and Russia actually use a large proportion of the oil that they're producing each day. And that means that Saudi Arabia is the world's largest exporter of oil. It's actually exporting the majority of the oil that it's pulling out of the ground. And as you can see from this chart, Saudi Arabia exports around 7.6 million barrels of oil per day. Russia is the world's second largest exporter, exporting around 5 million barrels per day. The world's third largest exporter in 2023 was Iraq, with around 4.4 million barrels per day, followed by the United States at 4.2 and Canada at 4 million barrels per day. Saudi Arabia is one of the leading members of OPEC+, which is the consortium of oil-producing countries that come together and decide on how much oil that they want to produce in order to keep the price of oil at a level that they're all comfortable with. And in April 2023, OPEC Plus announced that it was cutting back on oil production in order to increase the price of oil. And as part of that announcement, Saudi Arabia committed to cutting 500,000 barrels of oil per day from its production. And in November 23, that cut was increased to a million barrels per day. Now, obviously, from Saudi Arabia's point of view, there is a fine balancing act here because when you're selling a product, there is an interesting mixture between the volume that you're selling and the price that you're selling it at. And what you don't want to do is sell large volumes at a low price because that will reduce your revenue. But equally, if you cut back on your production in order to increase the price, there is a point when you're actually making less money because even though the price goes up, if you're selling less of it, then your total revenue will go down. And that's one of the problems that Saudi Arabia is now suffering from. Although the price of oil has stayed relatively high over the last 12 months since OPEC Plus has started announcing its cutbacks, it's not at a level that Saudi Arabia needs it to be at in order to make its budget. And in April 2024, the IMF estimated that Saudi Arabia needs oil prices to be at $96.2 per barrel in order to break even. This chart shows the latest budgeted figures for some of the leading members of OPEC for 2024 and 2025 in terms of the price that they need to achieve for all of their oil sales. And if we focus in on Saudi Arabia, you can see that we've got three different colored bar charts. The black chart shows the original budget for 2024. The pink bar shows the revised budget for 2024 and the yellow bar shows the budget for 2025. And what this shows is that the original budget for 2024 was a sales price of $79.7 .7 per barrel, which is well within where oil has been trading over the course of the last 12 months or so. However, the revised figure is $96.2 per barrel, which is significantly above the average that oil has been trading at over the last 12 months. And the budget for 2025 is $84.7 per barrel. And this chart shows the movement in the price of Brent crude oil over the last five years. And if we look at that level of $96.2 per barrel, you can see that the only time that oil has been trading at that level was the period immediately following Russia's invasion of Ukraine when we saw a huge spike in the oil price. It actually traded up above $100 per barrel for a prolonged period because of the uncertainty over global oil supplies. However, since the middle of 2022, when things started to calm down and the oil supply started to stabilize, the price hasn't been above $96.2. So the budgeted level that Saudi Arabia have set for the rest of 2024 looks highly ambitious, especially in view of the fact that China appears to be slowing down and they're one of the biggest drivers for demand for oil. And so if we do see a slowdown in the Chinese economy for the remainder of this year, it's likely that demand for oil will drop and therefore the price will drop under normal circumstances. Obviously, OPEC Plus could decide to further cut back on production. However, as we've just discussed, there is a fine balancing act here that if Saudi Arabia does achieve $96.2 per barrel because of production cuts, but that means that it's selling significantly less oil because it's cut back on production, then its bottom line revenue will probably be below the budgeted target. And interestingly, in terms of what's happening with the price of Saudi Arabian oil, it was recently announced 
that they were increasing the price of all of their different grades. And you can see from this table that super light was increased by 50 cents per barrel, extra light by 70 cents, light by 90 cents, medium by a dollar per barrel and heavy by $1.10. So what does all of this mean for the economy of Saudi Arabia? This chart shows Saudi Arabia's balance of trade for the last five years. And the balance of trade is basically the difference between the value of all of your exports and the cost of all of your imports. And the scale on the right hand side of this chart is shown in Saudi Arabian rials and goes from zero at the bottom to 90 at the top. And in terms of the exchange rate, one US dollar equates to around 3.75 Saudi Arabian rials. So the scale in dollars would be from zero to 24 billion at the top. And not surprisingly, given the fact that Saudi Arabia is the world's largest exporter of oil, the balance of trade in the last five years has been predominantly in positive territory. The only time that it actually dipped below zero was during the COVID pandemic, when obviously the demand for oil fell significantly, but only for a very short time. So Saudi Arabia has a huge amount of income coming in and spends significantly less on its imports. And so you might expect Saudi Arabia to have a huge current account to be building up large amounts of capital. However, this chart shows the current account over the last five years. And the scale on the right hand side of this chart is actually shown in billions of US dollars. And what this chart shows is that since the end of 2022, there's been a significant downward trend in terms of the current account. Saudi Arabia is spending large amounts of its reserves. And obviously, where that money is going is onto these ambitious projects. And this chart shows the quarterly movement in gross domestic product for Saudi Arabia over the last five years. And what this shows is that since the second quarter of 2022, there's been a significant negative trend for Saudi Arabia. In the third quarter of 2022, the 12-month GDP was 8% positive. It then reduced to 5.6% in the fourth quarter of 22, 3.2% in the first quarter of 23, was down to 1.7% by the second quarter of 2023. And in the third quarter of 2023, the 12-month rolling GDP actually fell into negative territory. It fell by 3.2%. And in the fourth quarter of 23, that 12-month fall was down to 4.3%. And as you can see, the latest figures for the first quarter of 2024 show that the 12-month GDP figure is still in negative territory and fell by 1.8%. So what's going on here? Why is the GDP for Saudi Arabia falling so rapidly? And why has it been going on for seven consecutive quarters? Well, all of this relates to what's happening with oil. Because Saudi Arabia is one of the leading voices in OPEC+, it's had to be at the forefront of taking those cuts. And over the last 12 months or so, Saudi Arabia has experienced cutbacks of over 1 million barrels per day. And as we discussed earlier, even if that does drive up the price of oil by five or $10 per barrel, if you're selling a million barrels less, the bottom line is that you're going to make less income overall. So the price per barrel might be good. So the margin on that barrel might be quite profitable. However, it's bottom line cash that counts when you're dealing with a huge economy like Saudi Arabia. And that's the problem that it's encountering right now. And this is very difficult to be able to fix because once you've committed to that cutback and the new price of oil sets wherever it is, if you say, well, now we're going to start producing a million barrels more per day, that's going to flood the market and it's going to bring that price right back down. So market manipulation is a very tricky thing to be able to manage because as soon as you start doing it, you become a victim of your own success. The price goes up, which is great. But actually, if you're producing significantly less oil and selling a million barrels less per day, then your revenue goes down and that has a direct impact on your gross domestic product for a country like Saudi Arabia that is entirely dependent on oil. And the impact of these production cuts is now being seen in the Aramco results. And Aramco is the state-owned oil company in Saudi Arabia that handles all of its oil exports. Aramco's net income fell 14% to $27.3 billion in the first quarter of 2024. However, despite this, the company kept its $31 billion dividend payment to the Saudi government and other investors 
Bloomberg reported that the generous payouts from the world's biggest oil exporter are becoming increasingly more important for the Gulf state as crude prices remain below the level it needs to balance its budget, which has now been re-estimated to be $108 per barrel. The Saudi Arabian government is now forecasting budget deficits every year until 2026. As a result of the current problems that Saudi Arabia is encountering, it's announced that some of the Vision 2030 projects have now been delayed. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening in Saudi Arabia is really quite fascinating. Because what we've got here is one of the richest countries in the world. It's sitting on the second largest oil reserves out of every country globally. And actually, when you look at the quality of the oil that Saudi Arabia is sitting on, there's an argument to say that it's actually the biggest reserves in terms of the highest grade oil, because some of the oil that Venezuela is sitting on is quite difficult to process. So we've got a country that has a huge wealth of natural reserves, and they've actually exploited it extremely well. They're the largest exporter globally. They're the number one player in the global export of oil. So all of that sounds fantastic and should mean that Saudi Arabia have no money worries whatsoever. But as I said right at the start of today's video, Saudi Arabia is like one of your very ambitious neighbours that's always looking to better themselves, to do something that's groundbreaking. And the NEON project is certainly that. This would be the most futuristic city and development that's ever been seen anywhere on planet Earth. And when you come up with an idea to build a city that's 100 miles long and three stories high that's surrounded in mirrored glass, that tells you that somebody isn't looking at the budget. That sounds extremely expensive to build anywhere. But then when you factor in on top of that, that this is being built in the desert and it's going to be entirely renewable and have sufficient water and air conditioning to keep everybody happy, you know that that's going to cost a hell of a lot of money. And that's exactly what we've got here. We've got an extremely expensive project that is now being financed. Now, when Saudi Arabia first announced this, they were intending to issue bonds to part finance, to get lots of foreign investment. But unfortunately, from their point of view, the level of foreign investment has been significantly lower than they originally expected. So what that's meant is that the Saudi government have had to fund a bigger proportion themselves. And that's one of the reasons why they're starting to see their cash balances dropping dramatically. But the other factor, as we've discussed in today's video, is what's going on in the oil markets. Because just because you're the world's largest supplier of oil doesn't mean that you can set the price because the oil markets are a true market. The price is set by supply and demand. And what we've seen over the last couple of years is that oil prices have moved up and down. Immediately following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we saw oil prices spike above $100 per barrel. And that was great news from Saudi Arabia's point of view because they're the biggest exporter and therefore they were making super profits at that point. But as the world started to stabilize and actually we started to see demand falling because there was a global slowdown towards the end of 2022, prices started falling. And Saudi Arabia, as the world's biggest earner from oil, didn't want that to happen. So they got together with the rest of OPEC Plus and decided that they were going to cut back on production to put the price back up to where they wanted it to go to. But unfortunately, you can't beat the market forever. So although those initial cutbacks did send the price up for a short period of time, it didn't last. The price started drifting down again. And so OPEC Plus was forced to announce further cuts later in 2023, which did push the price back up again but it didn't have a long lasting impact. And where the price is today is reported to be around $12 below the original estimate of Saudi Arabia's break even for 2024. However, as we just discussed, the latest estimate now is that the price per barrel would need to be around $108. So they're around $20 short of that. And the only way to get that price right up there immediately would be to announce further cutbacks. But the problem that you have when you do that is that every time you cut back on your production, it actually reduces your bottom line revenue because you might be selling it for a higher price per barrel. But if you're selling significantly less barrels, you're going to make less money. So Saudi Arabia can't control the price over the long term. And as a result of all of this, they've had to announce cutbacks 
on their Vision 2030 plan. So it doesn't look like Neon is going to open in six years' time, and we won't see the city called The Line opening within the next five or six years, certainly not with the level of people that were originally estimated to be living there. But it will be fascinating to see what happens with that Vision 2030 project, whether or not Saudi Arabia can get sufficient overseas interest in it, whether they can start raising bonds that will finance that development, or if they're going to have to step back and say, actually, because of what's happening in the oil markets and the price of oil, we don't think we're going to be able to fund that, and therefore we might have to put it on ice. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, found it useful, informative, and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face. <laughs> C'est chef la gueule. Oui. <laughs> oui. Ah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>